How's that? That's better. Ah, welcome. And if you're watching at home, you're welcome. If you're at home and you really want to get the feel of being with us, why not open all the windows so that the cold air blows in and then you'll be at one with us here. But it's good to have you with us this morning. We're continuing our theme today of the family of God, how we may be very different, but we're all part of one family, God's family. And we begin with a prayer. Father God, help us to know that you are here with us. Help us to know that we are surrounded your love. Open our eyes. Enlarge our vision. Open our hearts. Increase our faith. And open our minds and increase our knowing. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now the choir are going to sing an anthem that reminds us that God is always with us. It's Howard Goodall's setting of the 23rd Psalm, The Lord is My Shepherd. Thank you, choir. That is a beautiful setting of it, isn't it? Really just brings out the meaning of the words. So, welcome in the name of Christ, who died and was raised by the glory of the Father. 
Grace, mercy and peace be with you all. Christ is risen. Alleluia. So we pray together, loving Lord, fill us with your life-giving, joy-giving, peace-giving presence, that we may praise you now with our lips and all the day long with our lives, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we come to our confession, just a few seconds of silence as we each Bring to mind those things we know we need to confess. Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed for us. Let us therefore rejoice by putting away all malice and evil and confessing our sins with a sincere and true heart. Jesus Christ, risen Master and triumphant Lord, we come to you in sorrow for our sins and confess to you our weakness and unbelief. We have lived <clears throat> by our own strength and not by the power of your resurrection. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. We have lived by the light of our own eyes as faithless <clears throat> and not believing. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. We have lived for this world alone and doubted our home in heaven. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. May God, who loved the world so much that he sent his Son to be our Saviour, forgive us our sins and make us holy to serve him in the world. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Risen Christ, you filled your disciples with boldness and fresh hope. Strengthen us to proclaim your risen life and fill us with your peace to the glory of God the Father. Amen. So we're going to praise God by standing and saying together the words of the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Now, please be seated for our first reading. First reading is from Genesis uh, chapter 11, reading from verses 1 to 9. Now, the whole earth had one language and the same words. And as they migrated from the east, they came upon a plain in the land of Shinar and settled there. And they said to one another, come, let us make bricks and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone and bitumen for mortar. Then they said, come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower with its top in the heavens and let us make a name for ourselves, 
Otherwise, we shall be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. The Lord came down to see the city and the tower which mortals had built. And the Lord said, look, they are one people and they have all one language. And this is only the beginning of what they will do. Nothing that they propose to do will now be impossible for them. Come, let us go down and confuse their language there so that they will not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from there over the face of all the earth, and they left off building the city. Therefore it was called Babel, because there the Lord confused the language of all the earth, and from there the Lord scattered them abroad over the face of all the earth. This is the word of the Lord. And would you stand for our gospel reading? Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, you are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. No one, after lighting a lamp, puts it under the bushel basket, but on the lampstand and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. How's that? Yeah? Okay, let's pray. Lord, uh, thank you for your word. Uh, Please help us to learn and understand as we read that word, as we reflect on that word this morning. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, uh, as Gary said, we are thinking about the family of God. What I'm really trying to do over these few weeks is to kind of have a, like, canter through the whole Bible so that we see that this theme doesn't just relate to the odd passage, but it's endemic in the whole story of the Bible. So I hope that you've all got a Bible, and we might uh, take a look at uh, some passages this morning. Um, We're looking at the moment uh, at Genesis, the first book of the Bible. Uh, But just to quickly recap the last couple of weeks, uh, first week, we thought about how the members of the family of God are diverse, can be from any race or background, um, but together, and and in fact, it's only together that we reflect the image of God. So we thought about that in the first week, and then last week, the next slide, um, we started looking through our Bibles for evidence of this. And you don't have to go far. In fact, you don't have to go beyond the first page, uh, Genesis chapter 1 and Genesis chapter 2, to see this theme developing in the story of Adam and Eve, who are different, but only together reflect the image of God. So it's the, uh, it's the two genders together that reflect the image of God. And here in these chapters as well, chapters 1 and 2 of Genesis, we see something that I I would call the Eden ideal that God is looking for. He tells the man and the woman, he says, be fruitful and multiply and fill the land. He wants them to be fruitful and multiply, have lots of children, this whole of humanity to grow Um, and to spread out and fill the land, becoming diverse, but at the same time remaining unified in love of God and love of one another. So that is God's vision for humanity, if it is to truly reflect who he is. So that's how the Bible starts. 
So what happens? Well, things uh, run into trouble from pretty early on. So if we go to the next slide. Now, if you open your Bibles and you look at Genesis chapter 3 to 11, which we're going to sort of through this morning, you see how things do go very wrong. Uh, first of all, at chapter 3, we have Adam and Eve themselves. As we know, we have the story of the fall, where they decide they don't want to be obedient to God. They don't want to trust God. They think that they can do things their own way and will be better off that way. And uh, when this happens, they, what's the first thing that they discover? They then discover for the first print. And rather than being relaxed about that as they were before, they hide themselves. And it leads to conflict between the two genders. So that's a beginning of this whole story of fracturing that, uh, that, that comes uh, from that point on. Then if we look at chapter 4, we, oh, let's move on to the next slide, yeah. Um, we have the story of Cain and Abel. These are sons of um, Adam and Eve. And you know that story too, probably, where Cain gets jealous of his brother and he kills his brother and he is exiled to the east. So you have the first murder in the Bible. Got to, uh, hardly got off the first few pages of the Bible. Uh, we've had God's vision for humanity living in love and peace. And already, in the first generation of Adam and Eve, we've got a murder. Um, and if you read that chapter, you see that this violence becomes worse and worse. And then seven generations on from Cain, you get to a character called Lamech. Lamech takes two wives. One wife is not enough for him. So we have the first example of polygamy in the Bible with Lamech, takes two wives, and he really celebrates violence. He says, uh, if you look at verse 24, uh, chapter 4, if Cain is avenged seven times, if when someone offends Cain, he has the right to avenge that seven times, then Lamech will be avenged 77 times. And you see how this cycle of violence is really escalating, only at chapter 4. So um, this vision of God beautifully set out in chapter 1, verse 22, when God tells Adam and Eve to be fruitful and multiply and fill the land. They are being fruitful and multiplying, but they're filling the land with violence. It's not what God wanted. It's not what God hoped for. And if you look at Genesis uh, chapter 6, verse 5, it says, And the wickedness of humankind grieved the Lord to his heart. God is deeply saddened by what is happening. And so... Um, in the next chapters, in Genesis 7 and 8, God sends the flood. And the flood is to wash the land clean. The land has become filled with violence. The land has become stained by innocent blood. God sends the flood to wash the land clean. But he chooses one man from uh, uh, from the line of um, of uh, Cain and Abel from from oh no, actually it's I think he's from the third son uh, that Noah is descended of Adam and Eve. Anyway, they God chooses Noah uh, to to be the one who is going to be given this chance to fulfill the vision of God. And so he creates a sort of 
mini Eden, if you like, uh, in the ark. Um, and uh, Noah, in fact, the name Noah means rest. And in chapter 5, verse 29, uh, when we hear the name of Noah for the first time, actually, he's descended from Lamech, uh, but it's, um, it says, this one shall bring us relief. So God is washing the land clean and putting his hope and trust in this man, Noah, whose name means rest, in this little micro-Eden of the ark that floats on the waters. Okay, so you know the story of the flood. Uh, it rains for 40 days and 40 nights, and um, all of creation is destroyed apart from Noah and all the animals that are in the ark. And then finally, the rain stops, the floods recede, the ark comes to rest on Mount Ararat, and the family all get off the boat. And that is Noah and his three sons, who are called, uh, let's go on to the next slide, um, who are called um, Yafet, Ham, and Shem. And uh, so they're one family. We presume they're all speaking one language at this time. And, um, and again, uh, we get the repeat of God's vision. If you look at chapter 9, verse 1, God says to Noah and his family, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. So we're back to square one, God trying again through Noah. But sadly, Noah also fails. If you read the story at the end of chapter 9 from about verse 20 onwards, you see that Noah gets drunk, and it's all a bit obscure what happens, but he does something disgraceful, and his sons get involved in this. Two of them behave properly and one doesn't. And this causes a fracturing of the family. And they split up, and uh, Ham, one son, and his son, Canaan, are cursed and go off uh, their separate way. So, sadly, Noah doesn't pass the test either. And what we have as we read on, and in fact, actually, if you look at Genesis chapter 10, which is one of my um, favorite chapters in the Bible, I would have quite liked to have had it read today, but I, I don't know if Linda, if you're looking at chapter 10, you would have enjoyed <laughs> reading that. <laughs> it's a whole list of names which you might think, oh, if you're reading the Bible, oh, skip over chapter 10, because that looks really boring. But it's absolutely fascinating, a uh, really, really wonderful uh, chapter which sets out uh, the table of the nations. And it tells us all the tribes and nations that are descended from Noah and his three sons. And uh, you can see them sort of set out there. So I'll just say a few things about this so you, you get the idea about this uh, wonderful uh, listing of the nation. So first of all, on the, on the left there, you've got Yafet, I think, Yafet, uh, sometimes I think it's pronounced. And, um, and you can see how these tribes, um, nations, they're spread out all over the ancient world. Yavan, you probably can't see that from here, but you can see it perhaps in your, in your Bibles, the name Yavan. Yavan means Greece. Uh, you've got Ashkenaz, which is... Eastern Europe, um, you've got Kittim, which is sort of Cyprus and Italy. So you've got um, those nations spreading out to the borders of the Mediterranean world. Then if we look at Ham, on the right-hand side, <coughs> you've got Cush there, which is Ethiopia, Misraim, you've got Egypt, Canaan, which will be the promised land that the Israelites eventually are led to. Sons of Cush underneath that include Nimrod. Nimrod meaning, actually meaning rebel, although we think of it as meaning mighty warrior. Uh, and he is the one who, according to the Bible, built, originally built Babylon and Nineveh. And uh, further down, if you look at sons of Canaan, 
We've got the Jebusites and the Amorites and the Gergesites, Gergesites and the Hivites, and many other tribes who we will encounter later in the story of the Bible when the uh, Israelites, when the Hebrews are coming into the Promised Land, we meet all these tribes again. And you see from this table of nations in Genesis 10 that they're all kind of cousins. They're all connected. They're all, even though they've spread out and become separate tribes and nations, they are fundamentally all connected. Okay, finally, if we look at Shem, Shem actually means name, and um, Shemite is where we get the word Semite from. Um, and so you've got the Shemites here, and if you look down there under son of Salah, you see Eber, and that is where we get our word Hebrew from, Eber. So the Hebrews descended from the line of Shem, and the sons of Eber, we have Peleg, and his line will lead to Abraham, but we'll come back to that. So, uh, see all the different tribes and nations coming out of um, Noah's family. If you go to the next slide, and here this little map shows you how they are, sort of spread out all over quite a large region. Okay, let's go to the next slide. So, now, if you add up all those different tribes and nations, you'll find that we had 14 nations under Japheth, um, 30 under Ham, and 26 under Shem. So who's good at arithmetic here? All right, Ron, what does that add up to? 70, okay. So it's not a coincidence. It's not kind of a, you know, just accidental that these nations add up to 70 in total. What Genesis 10 is trying to say to us is that this is the totality of the nations. It's a kind of literary device using these numbers in the Bible. You know, we've come across seven before, meaning completeness, when we think about when God created the world and you know, did it seven days. And in the Bible, when, when you want a larger number that represents completeness, uh, 70 is usually the number that's used. So what we're supposed to take from this that is that these are the nations of the whole world. All the nations of the whole world have been spread out, but they all have a common origin. They're all descending from the same family. They are all actually one family. And this is a really important point in ancient times, because we might think, you know, with our knowledge of DNA, well, obviously, if we all trace our ancestors back, you know, we're going to converge into, there's going to be shared ancestry if you keep going back, you yeah? But that wasn't how people understood things in ancient times. In fact, very much the thought was that one tribe, one people were created by God, whereas others, your enemies, were created some other way. And they were sort of subhuman. So there was an understanding that this was the depth of separation that develops between the different tribes and nations. So what we get, in summary, um, if you look at chapter 10, verse 5, it says, these are the descendants of Japheth in their lands, with their languages, by their families, in their nations, separate languages. Verse 20, these are descendants of Ham by their families, their languages, their lands and their nations. And verse 31, these are the descendants of Shem by their families, their languages, their lands and their nations. So they've separated, they spread abroad in this one family. They're now all speaking different languages. So how did this come about? Well, let's go to the next slide. And we come to the 
passage that Linda read for us, Genesis chapter 11. And it's like a flashback here. We see in chapter, in chapter 10 all these different nations all split up. And then chapter 11 is like a little flashback and tells us how this came about. It says that to start with, there was one language. They were all of one lip, I think some translations say. I'm not quite sure what it says in the NRSV. Uh, one word or one language, one tongue. Um, they get off the boat. They go east to Shinar, which is sort of ancient Sumeria was. And um, they discover bricks, this new technology, a way of building better and bigger than ever. And they say... Let's make a name for ourselves. Let's make a name for ourselves. Let's do it ourselves. And they build a city with a great tower. And it says in the passage, the tower has its top in the clouds, in the skies. But actually, if you look at the Hebrew, it says it has its, the tower has its head in the clouds. It's like a gigantic human figure that is built. And in fact, actually, it should make us think of those gigantic statues that we thought about when we were looking at Daniel. I don't know if you remember when we did our sermon series on Daniel. Nebuchadnezzar liked to build big, gigantic human statues. And these represented the power and authority of a particular nation, in that case, the Babylonians. And um, this is an image of what you might think of as the Babylon model of unity in the Bible. Um, this is the alternative to the Eden model. This is a way of being united as a family, but through the domination of one single culture over others, so that other cultures become obliterated or subordinated. And this is what is happening at Babel. That God is seeing this consolidation of humanity, but with domination by one culture. And this is not what he's called for. This is not filling the land with diverse peoples who are unified in love of God and love of one another. So God scatters these people. He destroys the tower and scatters the people. It's a severe mercy that they are scattered and have their separate languages. So that's where we are at the end of chapter 11. And it's pretty gloomy, isn't it? Because God's plan seems to have gone really badly wrong. And we're in this terrible mess with everyone so divided. But the story goes on, and God does not give up. And he decides that what he's going to do is to choose one man, a sort of no-name man. We go on to the next slide. Um, oh, sorry. And to the next slide. Um, he's going to choose one man uh, and try to work through that one man and his family to bring about this vision that he has. And so who, do you, who is this character? Who, who, is, the, who is the man that uh, God is going to call? Abraham, yeah. So next week, and as you'll see in chapter 12, um, God doesn't give up. He's going to try through Abraham to bring about this vision. And you see it again. If you look at chapter 12, verse 2, you see how God's not giving up and he repeats that command. He repeats his vision yet again. He says to Abraham, I will, ma I will make you a great nation. You won't do it yourself. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and I will make your name great. I will make Shem great. Abraham is descended from Shem. Remember that meant name. So that you will be a blessing. That you will be a blessing to all nations. 
That is the promise of God. And that is the rest of the story of the Bible, how that comes about through Abraham, a descendant of Eber, the Hebrews, and how that is going to happen. Uh, it's a long story. We're going to go through it, uh, get through it in the next few weeks, just seeing how that comes about. So let's pray. Lord, uh, thank you that we are all part of this wonderful, big family of God, of yours, Lord. Um, and uh, we thank you for all our brothers and sisters and cousins, all the amazing diversity of this family. And we thank you for all that difference and rejoice in that diversity. And we just ask that we may be united uh, in the way that you call us to be united, loving you, trusting you, being guided by you, and loving one another as Jesus has called us to love one another, loving one another as you love each one of us. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Martine. Fascinating. And uh, now we're going to declare our faith in this great God, remembering we are part of his plan here. So will you stand as we affirm our faith? So let us declare our faith in the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures. He was buried he was raised to life on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. Afterwards, he appeared to his followers and to all the apostles. This we have received and this we believe. Amen. Now we kneel or sit to pray. and Kathleen is coming to lead us. Dear Lord, help us to love one another. This pandemic has split loved ones apart through loss or isolation. Divided opinions on what is the right or the wrong way to overcome the virus. But if we all love and care for one another and trust in you, Lord, we will get through this with your divine help. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God bless our most gracious Queen. Help her to overcome the grief and solitude she must be suffering at this time. May her stoic, brave face be inspiration for us all in times of loss and trouble. Please give peace to all who have lost loved ones and help them to remember we will all be reunited in your eternal glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear Father, help those who suffer in countries where there is conflict and war. Please help them see through your divine eyes peace for each other and bring them to reconciliation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for those who are unwell in mind, body, and spirit. Give them strength to endure and courage to overcome their difficulties. We remember especially those in our community. Gillian Figuero, Jenny Figuero, Christopher Gollis, and Vivian Gollis, Evelyn Hanna, Chris Hargreaves, Sean Hunt, Pete Javhad, Jaroslaw Jakubek, Maureen Kelly, Anna Lee, Susan Rigby,
Betty Seaman, John White, and Sophie Burnham. May the Lord bless them and keep them safe. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Please, Lord, keep our church strong and support Martine and all who work hard for the smooth running of all the activities in the community and in the church. May we all give thanks and know how blessed we are to be in this lovely part of Chiswick, our strong United Kingdom and a peaceful part of the world. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Kathleen. Now, would you stand, please, as we come to share the peace? Of course, as always, let me remind you, we can't make sort of physical contact with one another. If you're at home with your families, that restriction doesn't apply, by the way. So. But the risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then they were glad when they saw the Lord. The peace of the Lord be always with you. So let's share God's peace with one another. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right. It is our duty at all times and everywhere to give you thanks, almighty and eternal Father. And in these days of Easter, to celebrate with joyful hearts the memory of your wonderful works. For by the mystery of his passion, Jesus Christ, your risen Son, has conquered the powers of death and hell and restored in men and women the image of your glory. He has placed them once more in paradise and opened to them the gate of life eternal, And so, in the joy of this Passover, earth and heaven resound with gladness, while angels and archangels and the powers of all creation sing forever the hymn of your glory. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who on the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. 
This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption as we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. We bring to you, bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send your Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup so that we in the company of all the saints may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Rejoicing in God's new creation, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. As we come to the Lord's table, remember I will stand at the step and just administer the, the bread. And we come sort of down through the middle and then back through the sides. But first let me invite you, because this is the table not of the church, but of the Lord. It is made ready for those who love him and who want to love him more. So come you who have much faith and you who have little. You who have been here often and you who have not been here for a long time. You who have tried to follow and you who have failed. Come not because I invite you. It is our Lord. It is his will that those who want him should meet him here. So we pray, Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give lights to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us so we and all your children shall be free and the whole earth live to praise your name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Martin.
one sec. Uh, just a few notices before we have our final song. Um, thank you to everyone who came to the quiz last night. Uh, there weren't that many of us, but we had a really good time. And um, I want to say thank you to Ned and Sonia and John Gill, who uh, helped us. We're setting the quiz. And also Edie, my daughter. We had another fiendish teenager round. And, um, and the winners were, as before, the Whitehall Wanderers. Uh, so congratulations to Sarah Tonks and the other Whitehall Wanderers. They had the huge advantage of having a teenager on their team. My teenager was not available, so I'm blaming that for the reason I came last. Uh, <laughs> um, but yes, yeah, so, so we'll have to have another one fairly soon and really take on the White, Whitehall Wanderers. Uh, I don't know. I think we want to defeat you, Sarah. <laughs> anyway, thank you to everyone. That was fun. Um, so what else? Tonight we have our APCM. It's an annual meeting. Uh, for all church members, parishioners to come along to. And uh, we're going to have it online at 7 o'clock. Now, I did set it round yesterday, the link. So if you're thinking, oh, how can I get on? Well, find my Saturday email from yesterday, and it has the link on it. And if you can join us, that would be lovely. We'll be reviewing uh, last year, 2020, an interesting year for all of us. Uh, and... Um, looking forward to what next with a with a new PCC um, going forward after this meeting. So uh, come along if you can. Also, um, we will have an evening prayer at six o'clock online. Again, that link is in the Saturday message. Um, come and pray at six if you can online. And then we'll, uh, that usually is only about 20 minutes. Um, then we have a break, and then we'll start the APCM at 7. Um, what else? We are going to have a song outside. The choir are going to lead us singing, I Will Sing the Wondrous Story. Uh, if you took a Bible for today, please put it on the table at the back, uh, because Sue wants to give them a quick clean afterwards. We're being very, we're being very diligent with our covid safety uh, arrangements, I hope you notice. Um, good. So just finally to say, if you'd like to make, make a donation to the church, please do. Um, be, even small amounts, so uh, gratefully received. Um, you can pop them into the yellow envelopes and put them in the basket at the back of church. Or if you're watching online, uh, just go onto our website and you're, it should be clear there how to give to the church. That would be lovely. Thank you very much. So I'm going to hand over to Hansel. He's going to sing, us in a, uh, sing a wonderful song for us, Amazing Grace, My Chains Are Gone.
wonderful song God has called us and we're surrounded by his unending love and amazing grace live this week remembering that let's stand and uh, for our blessing God the Father by whose love Christ was raised from the dead open to you who believe the gates of everlasting life Amen Alleluia God the Son, who in bursting the grave has won a glorious victory, give you joy as you share the Easter faith. Amen. Alleluia. God the Holy Spirit, whom the risen Lord breathed into his disciples, empower you and fill you with Christ's peace. Amen. Alleluia. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and all whom you love this day and always. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.